I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, April, I'm sorry, February 15th. I'm wishing for warm weather, can you tell? Tuesday, February 15, 2022, uh, meeting of the Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors. Are we certified in compliance with the open meeting law? We are. The agenda was posted on February 11th at 4.30. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next is roll call. Next item of business is the approval of the January 18, 2022 journal. Supervisor Brower? A uh, motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Supervisor Wagner? I second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Under discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. All right, next item is the consideration of appointment by county administrator. To local emergency planning committee, Zachary Wilkes Metro of Whitefish Bay, representing local media. Is there somebody willing to make the motion? Supervisor Gehring? Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Wagner? I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Supervisor Hoffman? Thank you. That motion is proved unanimously. Are there any presentations this evening? There are none. Are there any public addresses this evening? There are none. Letters, communications, and announcements? Uh, the only communication we have is a resolution from Winnebago County Board of Supervisors regarding Chapter 980 of the state statutes dealing with supervised release of sex offenders. I believe we've had that or a similar one multiple times, so we'll receive that for information. That is all. County Administrator's Report. I think that'll suffice. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Koch, for that very warm introduction. Very nice. Well, welcome the, uh, to the highly anticipated Sheboygan County State of the County Address. I imagine everyone has been looking forward to this evening. I have a fair amount to go through, so I'm going to take my mask off for this presentation. 
I, you ha all have a copy of the state of the county on your desk. You received it in email form. And we put a fair amount of time into this. Like any document, it's a team effort, and we try to, as concisely as we can, talk about some of the key accomplishments and milestones that we all can take pride in and that we all have been a part of. So I'm going to uh, go through this not only for you this evening, but certainly for viewers or people who are interested in seeing the collective accomplishments of Sheboygan County government and the outstanding teamwork and track record that we've developed here. And my esteemed colleague and deputy administrator, as well as Cheryl, I think, are going to put this up on the screen. So could the PowerPoint please get teed up? And next slide, please. Setting the stage, as I think most of you are aware, but certainly a lot of people in Sheboygan County don't recognize, is we have nearly 850 employees administering over 200 programs and services, working in 19 different departments with a $167 million budget, a budget that you adopt annually in November. Of that $167 million, it's property taxes, it's state and federal revenue, it's fees, fines, and forfeitures, and about $52 million of that is property tax levy. In fact, if you look at the slide before you up on the screen, you'll see the big picture on your left, the $167 million budget. And then you'll see when you break, wait, am I looking at incorrectly? It would be on your, is it your left? Supervisor Jorgensen on your left, is that the large $167 million graph? It's on your right. Well, now that we're all on the same page, you'll see the larger picture of all of the departments represented in their total budget. And then you'll see the property tax levy broken out, the 52 million. And you'll notice in some cases there's quite a difference in the overall amount of revenue associated with the department and how much property tax levy is utilized. Look at Rocky Knoll, for example, one of our four largest departments, yet they're relying on about a million dollars or a little better in property tax levy. So big picture, a lot going on in Sheboygan County government, and most of your constituents really don't have a feel for it. Unless they're part of this organization, serving as an employee or an elected official, a county board supervisor, most people really don't recognize the breadth of county government and all the programs and services, all that's going on. Next slide, please. So again, I'm going to touch on our top 10 accomplishments, milestones, opportunities ahead. And as you can imagine, when you have as many programs and services and good work that's going on in Sheboygan County, it's difficult to boil this down every year. But we've been doing this for a number of years. If you're so inclined or any of your constituents are inclined, you can go to our Sheboygan County website. Not only will you see all the departments and some information about them, but you'll see our state of the county and our top 10 lists that we've developed maybe a little better than a decade. COVID-19, you can hardly talk about the last year or the last two years without discussing the global pandemic that we all are sick and tired of and that we've all in this organization been a part of trying to support our community and help keep people safe. And uh, I can't tell you how pleased I am to see the, the recent data. As you can see, uh, the majority of people in Sheboygan County have chosen to be vaccinated. In fact, if you're 55 and older, if you take the cumulative vaccination levels of people 55 a of age and older, over 80% of people have gotten vaccinated. That's outstanding. It doesn't happen overnight. It took a lot of time and hard work from all levels of government. But as you can see, most people now have taken steps to protect themselves, their family, their friends, their neighbors. And that is going to contribute to us getting out of this, this dark time. The other thing that I know Chairman Koch and I, and I'm sure you keep a close eye on, is what's happening with our hospitals. It wasn't long ago when the hospital presidents were calling us and saying, help, we need your help. We're, we're being overrun. We have a staff shortage. Our, our employees are burning out. We need your help. And of course, Rocky No plays a role in that, as do all of us. Fortunately, we're starting to see those numbers come down as well. So we're all hopeful 
that we're getting out of the woods. But I can't say enough about our public health team. Um, they've been outstanding. They've been outstanding. And our Grossman at Strip Modder, all the people in public health, the Health and Human Services Committee, the board support, it's been outstanding. There's been a lot of work done with vaccinations. There's been a lot of work done reaching out to people. And there's been tremendous community partnerships. We've been working and continue to meet every other Monday with hospital presidents, public health professionals, emergency responders, elected offic officials, school board leaders, and other community stakeholders. The work continues. We continue to work in collaboration. I'm proud of that effort. And proud of folks like Star Grossman, who, who you may recall, the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, selected her for the Best Under 40 Award last May. That was a nice evening. And then just recently, just last week, uh, she was nominated as an MVP of the team uh, for public health and the good work she does. So it's nice to see Star Grossman, and as she would say if she was standing here, and their team as a whole, and our organization as a whole, be recognized by the chamber and other businesses for the good work that they're doing and the incredible leadership that they've shown in this community. So we're very proud of that. And I want to thank Chairman Koch, who, uh, as you know, came on in a real difficult time uh, to take the reins as chair. And he has been a steadfast, thoughtful leader. And I also want to thank the Health and Human Services Committee, who obviously work so closely with the Health and Human Services Department and Public Health. Thank you all for your leadership. The second area that I wanted to touch on this evening was our successful Ryder Cup. Now, there's a transition from a pandemic to a Ryder Cup. Of course, that was delayed a year. The Kohler Company and the PGA of America, they wanted to keep people safe and uh, err on the side of caution. They gave us another year to gear up and plan for this event. 45,000 people came to Sheboygan County daily to participate in this. We had 27 hours of live coverage of reflecting on Sheboygan County and even Lake Michigan cooperated. It was calm on Lake Michigan, almost the entire, entire tournament. I couldn't believe it. It was just beautiful. It looked like we we're in California. Just beautiful. And again, uh, Compliments to our Health and Human Services Department, our Transportation Department, our Sheriff's Department, a number of county board supervisors that served on oversight committees, planning committees, all the planning with the food, traffic, keeping people safe, mitigation plans for COVID, all this additional planning that had to be done. It was just an incredible team effort, and 4,000 people volunteered just to be a part of it and help out. Just tremendous. Uh, Sheriff Corey Raisler isn't with us this evening, but as you can see, his team uh, stood where the players did at one point to snap a photo. Today is Corey Raisler's birthday, so if you get a chance, maybe give Corey a shout out. But uh, all of our staff really made a difference, a positive impact to help with this event. And uh, we're proud that it went so well. Sheboygan County shined, and Sheboygan County government was a part of it. Moving on. Another area that we're very proud of is child protective services and out-of-home care reductions. You may recall um, Matt Stripmotter and others discussing this, and for over 20 years, we saw a rise in protection due to child maltreatment. Very sad topic. One that'll break your heart when you get into the weeds on it, how kids are impacted, what happens in this community, and it's real. And we saw all of a sudden all of our out-of-home care grow to 367 individuals in a very short period of time, as you can see from the slide up there. A, a trend that wasn't acceptable. What's going on here? How do we help these kids? How do we have a more stable family environment for them? And Crystal Fieber and Matt Stripmotter and their teams got together and talked about what can we do differently. What can we try that we haven't been trying of late? And to their credit, they substantially changed some of the, the services and systems that we, we had in place and just tried some different approaches and reduced children being placed by 60%. 
to many people in our community, that may not mean a lot. But it sure means a lot to those kids. And Crystal and Matt and their teams did a tremendous job. So we're very proud of that. That's one of the high success points of the past year, and we want to continue to do that good work. Moving on to Rocky Knoll, speaking of good work, Rocky Knoll continues to maintain our five-star rating. And I find that rather remarkable in that we're the only nursing home in the county that has maintained a five-star rating now for four straight years. We have a number of wonderful nursing homes in Sheboygan County, but we are the only one that has maintained the five-star rating. It's a credit to Kayla. It's a credit to our, our, health and, our health care centers committee. It's a credit to our organization as a whole. It doesn't just happen. It reflects on our tremendous staff and the quality of care that they provide. So very, very proud of Rocky Knoll, particularly uh, during this time when they're struggling and dealing with COVID and dealing with a workforce shortage and all the challenges that are going the way of our health care providers. Very proud of them. And I want to thank our health care centers committee chair Jackie Veldman, again our health care centers committee, our finance committee and county board for the additional resources you provided to increase wages for our CNAs and for our housekeepers, for the additional resources that you've allocated from ARPA and another state grant to improve the residential rooms and just make some real improvements there. And I like this last photo because I recognize a lot of those people, even with the masks on. And usually when you walk into Rocky Knoll, that's not how you see them. They're busy as ever uh, helping the residents and doing the good work that they do. But uh, we've got some really wonderful, caring, good-hearted people there. And um, they, deserve, they deserve all sorts of accolades. Next slide, please. Facility enhancements. I mentioned Rocky Knoll. You'll see that we are in the midst of upgrading the residential rooms. And one of the positives of having a lower census there right now is we are able to completely clear out some of the halls, some of the corridors at Rocky Knoll, and redo the rooms. They're getting a complete facelift, whether it's new bathroom fixtures, uh, toilet, um, toilet sink, mirror, all the walls, which was block wall, like many of us probably have in our basement, or you'll certainly see in the detention center, uh, all of that's being painted over and to look more like what would, uh, we would see when we walk in our front doors. It's really going to be a nice enhancement for the residents. We also are in the midst of planning for our alternatives to incarceration at the detention center. Tremendous, tremendous initiative that's in play and that the county board has supported. and. Uh, Corey and his team have already taken some pressure off the detention center doing some things differently. But we're hopeful this is ultimately going to save taxpayers millions and millions of dollars rather than adding brick, bricks and mortar to lock people up at the detention center. We're trying to work with people and help them rehabilitate and become productive members of society. So appreciate the good work that's going on there. I want to thank um, Rob Ziegelbauer who really has been helpful with not only supporting things like this, but a number of facility enhancements also include what we're doing at the Taylor Museum, what we're doing with supporting our bookworm gardens. And Robert, if you're not aware of it, Sherman Ziegelbauer serves on the Sheboygan County Historical Board. And I know some days he may enjoy that more than others, but that is another county asset very important one and he's identified some opportunities for improvement there so we appreciate your leadership there Robert. Highway 23. We've mentioned Highway 23 for 30 years when it was first enumerated and we thought it was going to get done and it got delayed and it got delayed and finally the past year Highway 23 the work was done to make it a four lane rather than the two lane. It's safer, it's going to help with economic development, and our community wanted it. Businesses wanted it. Our state legislators, to their credit, stepped up the past few years to help support that. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation stepped up, and our Planning and Conservation Department, as well as our Transportation Department, really stepped up to help see that through. We don't 
do the expansion of Highway 23 for, as an interstate, but we will help maintain it. At, but we did assist with the Old Plank Road Trail extension, which will now go from the city of Sheboygan to Fond du Lac. So a very important investment in our community. And I want to thank you to acknowledge Supervisor Tom Wagner for his leadership on this. Tom was chair when Highway 23 still seemed to be kind of hanging in the balance and wasn't really getting the attention that we knew it deserved. And he gently pushed on our area legislators and we made contacts and we wrote letters to the editor. And I credit Supervisor Wagner for helping bring some more attention to it. And as you know, it's now done and Fond du Lac will continue on their portion in the year ahead. New educational facility at the Sheboygan County Marsh. Look at that photo. Isn't that beautiful? That's just beautiful. That's actually the Kohler educational facility at the Sheboygan County Marsh. If you haven't been out there, that's it. It's beautiful. And uh, the YMCA kids and families for generations to come are going to enjoy this. They were still using that old donated Sargento trailer that's been there for, I think, 40 years. What an amenity. What an amenity for our community. What an investment for our community. And I can't thank the Kohler Company enough, Sargento, and many other businesses that stepped up, the Friends of Sheboygan County that helped raise funds and leverage funds to see this through. Of course, the county board provided funding as part of, as part of our five-year capital plan. All those dollars were leveraged to get this done. Trees from the very site were used to help support it. It's beautiful. So we'll have an open house this summer. But uh, so many people stepped up to help see this to fruition. And uh, Supervisor Keith Obler, who uh, chairs the Planning and Resources Committee and was a friend, Friends of the Marsh member, as I was years ago when we built the tower. Keith, are you still on the, the Friends? He's nodding, yes. And so Keith's been doing that for a lot of years now. It took all of these people coming together and working collaboration to see it through. And it's going to, again, it's going to serve this community and kids for generations to come. So we're very proud of it. We'll see you again probably late summer, early spring for an open house. And, and I'm sure from time to time, maybe we can have some meetings out there. Collaborative approach for American Rescue Plan Act funding. This is going to be a tremendous focus on the year ahead. Back in August already, we identified and established six community engagement task force to provide us input on how these dollars are going to be invested in the community. Uh, as you recall, the nationally there was 1.9 trillion. The state received 2.5 billion. Sheboygan County 22.4 million. Half of that we have in house. The other half will be coming this summer. As I mentioned, we established six task forces to get input engage people, get their ideas and recommendations. Affordable housing, chaired by Don Hammond, who is currently the chair of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, and Gary Dulmas, the former chair. Behavioral health and crisis response, chaired by Kate Baer, who is the executive director of United Way, and Matt Stripmotter, who we all know as our health and human services director. Broadband, chaired by Chris Lewinsky, our IT director. Child care, uh, chaired by Colleen Steinbroker, I may have got the last name wrong, and Gina Kobe. Covelli, Covellini, Covelli, Covel, Covelli, Covelli. I'm very fond of her. I need to work on that last name. Uh, she's been with United Way for years, and she's wonderful. Uh, child care, as I just mentioned, transportation. Derek Mink, believe it or not, is how that last name is pronounced. He works with Ed Procheck over at the city, does good work on transportation, and then workforce development. Deidre Martinez, who, as you know, is the executive director of the county chamber. They all step forward and are chairing or co-chairing these task forces. Some of them work for us. Some of them are volunteers. So we had to work thoughtfully and patiently with all of them because the vast majority of the people participating are volunteers. Believe it or not, on the Affordable Housing Task Force, 17 organizations are represented. Behavioral Health and Crisis Response, 18 organizations are represented. Broadband, 11 organizations are represented. Child Care, 14 organizations are represented. 
transportation, 13 organizations, and workforce development, 19 organizations are represented. You will not find a county in the state who has engaged more people and sought more input than Sheboygan County on how we should invest these taxpayer resources. Not one. We're proud of it. We're leading. And everyone involved on these task forces deserves such credit. We also have a number of county board supervisors assisting with this. Kurt Brower and Henry Nelson are on the Affordable Housing Task Force. Vern Koch and Bill Gehring, Behavioral Health and Crisis Response. Jerry Jorgensen, Al Bosman and Bill Gehring, Broadband. Child Care, Rebecca Clark. Transportation, Ed Prochek. Workforce Development, Robert Sigelbauer and Charlotte Nanig. Thank you. Everyone volunteered to participate and provide input and listen and learn and engage. Of course, the county board will be making the final decisions. But we've got some work ahead of us. But I'm very proud of the fact that we reached out and sought input and engagement. And I think we're going to have some wonderful recommendations. In fact, I know we're going to because I've seen drafts. And I've been meeting every month, month and a half or so with the chairs for check-in. And it's, it's been phenomenal. So on your desk is a high-end draft timetable of the steps ahead. Periodically, um, a board member will reach out and say, well, what's next? And this should give you a good flavor for what's coming up next. Of course, this is subject to the change of Chairman Koch and the executive committee, whom I report to, obviously. But we've put together some proposed steps going forward. And the next one will be a March 3rd, March 3rd executive committee meeting that will be held here in the county board chambers where the six task force chairs and co-chairs will share their report and recommendations. So those of you that are interested can participate either in the room, if space provides, or virtually, which we'll be encouraging most people to do so we're, we're not too tight in here, right? March 3rd, coming up. From there, the executive committee is going to be reviewing and ranking, prioritizing these reports and recommendations. And ultimately, it'll likely be referred, I presume, to the finance committee. And the full county board is going to have an opportunity, obviously, for input. And you will be making the final decisions. So that's a snapshot for you. Two more remaining. Replacement of the asphalt plant. Not a topic that necessarily may get some people jumping out of their seats, but when you have 450 miles of paved roads, 152 bridges, and recognize that the transportation system is essential for our quality of life, you also have to recognize that behind all that asphalt has to be the materials and the tools to make it. And we have an asphalt plant that's going on 35 years old, discuss this at our leadership forum. Certainly the Transportation Committee has discussed this a number of times, but uh, very pleased that the county board supported this initiative. We're going to be replacing it and we're going to be paying for it with our half percent sales tax, which as you recall, goes all to transportation or we share it with some of our municipalities and we provide some direct property tax relief with it. So it's working out well. And I want to thank and acknowledge Supervisor Roger Destrudy for his leadership on this issue. There isn't a board member, with all respect, there isn't a board member that knows more about transportation than Roger Destrudy. And I think, I know he's our most senior experienced board member now. Uh, his leadership not, not only is a former chair for transportation, but his leadership with the asphalt plant is doing this community a great service. So we appreciate that. And then finally, Strong fiscal condition. I, I can recall when the executive committee hired me 23 and a half years ago that we had two consecutive years with double digit increases in the property tax levy and in the tax rate. I think one year it was 18%. I mean, double digit significant increases. And part at the time, what contributed to that was building the new detention center. But as I reflect back on that and reflect on what we have accomplished over the last 10, 20 years, there haven't been any double-digit increases. 
your track record fiscally is second to none. It's outstanding. All of the investments that you've made in this community, all the people that we serve, all the people that reach, we reach out to and strive to lift up, all the difficult work as a law enforcement officer or social worker or caring for the neediest of needy at Rocky Mill, all the things we do, yet somehow, some way, year after year, the county board passes a budget that on average in the last two years, 10 years, has been about 2%. Remarkable. Just remarkable. I think sometimes in the organization, we kind of take that for granted. We're kind of used to it. We passed a 1.14% property tax levy increase for this year. 1.14%. And again, you look at the last 10 years, 1.22%, I misspoke, I said 2% a minute ago. 1.22% has been the average property tax levy increase in this county for the last 10 years. It's fantastic. I'm proud of it, I'm proud of you, I'm proud of this organization. That is an outstanding fiscal track record. And it reflects on every single board member it certainly reflects on our department heads and our leadership team, our finance director, our finance department staff. We work together in collaboration or things like that don't happen. If you just look at what's happened in the last year, and there's too much detail here, it'll be shared with the finance committee next week. And I think next month I'll focus a little bit on the fiscal performance of the year. But I can tell you once again, uh, we have the vast majority of our departments working with in their budget parameters that you approve, that you enact. I, I just met with Jim Tibis today. He's our building services director. Jim is the most long-standing department head that I hired. Hired him uh, 22 years ago, going on 23. He's the most senior department head. Every single year, Jim produces a department budget that meets the parameters established by the Finance Committee. And every single year, he ends the year working within those budget parameters. I, I don't think there's a department head with a stronger track record than Jim Tabeast. And he will tell you, with prices going up and all the variations, that's difficult to do and maybe more so going forward. But he does outstanding work. Our fin finance director, Wendy Sharnan, she's tough. She's strong complete command of our roles and responsibilities. And when we work with all the department heads and go through their budgets, following the guidance and the expectations of you as a county board, all the results speak for themselves. So if you look at just the past year, almost in every instance, departments have once again worked within their budget parameters or come in with positive variances. We're looking at about a 2.5 million positive variance in the general fund. We're looking at a positive variance at health and human services, and transportation, and Rocky Knoll would be the one that stands out where we're struggling. But thanks to the CARES Act funding and the ARPA funding, they too will end the year without a negative variance that impacts local property taxpayers. If we didn't have the ARPA fund funding and we didn't have the CARES Act funding and the other resources that have come from the state and federal government, Local property taxpayers would be picking up the difference. I wonder if that's what they want. I tend to doubt it. Debt service. We're leading the charge there. The county board years and years ago established an approach where we would only bond so much every year or every two years. And we've stayed true to that guidance of the county board and the finance committee. So we're seeing our debt service go down. Next slide, please. If you compare and contrast to other counties, you can see that we're leading the pack. Our debt service per capita is much lower than Eau Claire, Fond du Lac, La Crosse, Manitowoc, Marathon, and Ozaki. It wasn't an accident. It's because of the thoughtful fiscal approach of the county board. Next slide, please. Every now and then, batteries run out. As I was going through this, 
two-page summary of a $167 million budget and 207 programs and services. I found myself starting to underline every time I mentioned a entity, an organization, a department that we worked with. If you take the time to look at this, do that. You will see in just about every area, in order to accomplish something, we're working with others to get it done. Throughout. And as I you know, summarize this, this slide here, I think Sheboygan County has a track record where the county board and department heads and our team as a whole, we work together in a respectful, thoughtful manner. We challenge one another, but we strive to work together worked. I look at our heads of local government. Most counties don't have an established heads of local government comprised of all the chief elected officials of all their municipalities. We do. Get together with them once, twice a year, more or less depending on what's hot in the, in the community. And through that, we've built consensus for things like supporting the half percent sales tax. Heads of local government supported it, so did the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation that's made up of over 35 businesses on the board, a couple hundred countywide, but 35 businesses like Sargento and Kohler and Master Gallery and Bemis and Johnsonville, they all supported it as well. They worked together. Our county chamber, wow, have they stepped up with the pandemic and sharing information, Deetra and her team, wonderful work. United Way, I had the privilege of serving on the United Way board for about 15 years. Matt Strittmatter is now on the board. Do they do good work? All the organizations that United Way supports, many of which we're working now on the ARPA task forces. Tremendous work. State and federal agencies, sometimes that can be a little tougher. But when I look at the Sheboygan River and Harbor and a $100 million investment that we made, what, 10 years ago? All sorts of support and people pulling together to get that done. And our area legislators. I don't know if I've ever had more empathy for our area legislators than I do today. And when I say that, I have a lot of respect and consider Representative Terry Kotzma, and Senator Devin Lemieux, and Representative Tyler Vorpago. I consider them friends. We're one of the few counties that have a legislative breakfast where we can interact with them and check in with them. We don't always agree. And they don't always follow up on things maybe the county wants. But they're good people. And two of them in the past, Devin and his dad, Dan, served right here on the county board. As I like to say, this is a pretty good, pretty good place to learn about local government and working in partnership and pragmatically together to get things done. Somehow we lose a lot of that at the state and federal government. But I empathize with them more than ever before because of the state, a divisiveness right now in our politics and, and just what's happened. It's, it's like I've never seen in my tenure. It's something, and they're certainly feeling it. But we're fortunate to work with a lot of good people. Next slide. So that concludes my remarks. I hope that you may have taken something away from the state of the county, and if you need any additional information or you're ever asked from your constituents for additional information, don't hesitate to contact myself, our deputy administrator, Elaine Krause, any of our department heads. As I said earlier, I'm proud of our organization. I think our team is strong, they care, and I thank you for the, the time this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Administrator Payne. Um, next is the consideration of committee reports, Executive Committee Resolution Number 33. Regarding carryover of unexpended 2021 appropriations to 2022 recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Motion is approved unanimously. 
Next is resolution number 34. Regarding initial resolution authorizing $7,195,000 of general obligation promissory notes for capital projects, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll second. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Supervisor Pocek. Sir. Motion is approved unanimously. And resolution number 35. Regarding resolution providing for the sale of $7,195,000 of general obligation promissory notes, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Obler. Move to adopt, please. Thank you, Supervisor Obler. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gearing. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. That motion is also approved unanimously. Thank you. With that, I shall turn the gavel over to Vice Chair Zickabauer. Good evening to you all. Resolution number 36 from Finance Committee regarding awarding the sale of $7,195,000 general obligation promissory notes. Pursuant to Rule 13, it is anticipated that a motion to withdraw this proposed resolution will be made. If by a majority of votes, the board votes to pull the resolution, subject to immediate action. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I move to pull for immediate action. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Brower. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Uh, please vote. Supervisor Bosman. Thank you. The motion to pull is approved unanimously. Uh, search for a uh, first to uh, enact. Yeah. Supervisor Obler. Move to adapt, please. Thank you, Supervisor Obler. Supervisor Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. is proved unanimously. Resolution number 37. From Human Resources Committee regarding reauthorization of self-insurance status for workers' compensation. Resolution number 7, 37 will be referred to finance. Resolution number 38. From Transportation Committee regarding granting easement to Wisconsin Public Service Corp for Sheboygan County Memorial Airport. Resolution number 38 will be referred to executive. Ordinance is introduced. Ordinance number four. From the executive committee regarding amending section 1.04 of the county code to update qualifications of county board supervisor candidates. Ordinance number four will be referred to human resources. Ordinance number five. From human resources committee regarding amending pay scales for certain county positions. Ordinance number five will be referred to finance. Ordinance number six. From the Law Committee regarding amending Chapter 38.29, Regulation of Emergency Alarms. Ordinance number six will be referred to Executive. Supervisor Testrudy, would you help me? Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I move to adjourn. <coughs> Thank you, Supervisor Testrudy. Supervisor Hoffman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Will you all please vote?
adjourned.